Mr. Esteban, an African individual, was in the sky on Buena Luz, Esteban Arona Main, and uh, he specializes in political economy like me, but he's an American history doctorate uh, holding individual, and he's writing about American in rugged individualism, and he concludes with the famous quote by uh, Walt Kelly's character Pogo, in which he summarized Americans' response to the coronavirus as, we have met the enemy, said Pogo, and he is us. Let's find out about this issue of call. The uh, evidence. Why we can't defeat the virus by Wayne O'Leary. Okay. The evidence is, is all around us. Rising rates of infection, increasing numbers of deaths, hospital overloaded throughout the South and West, Americans banned from most of the countries on the planet. We are losing Donald Trump's war on the coronavirus and emerging as the global epicenter of a pandemic, a nation of literal super spreaders. That's us. Thank you. Why is that? You may well ask. The easy answer is it's almost too easy. Is the moronic incompetent occupation of the Oval Office. Trump's manifold failures in dealing with the COVID-19 crisis comprise the stuff of legend. Over the summer, he spent weekends playing golf as the epidemic surged around him, a modern, modern day Nero fiddling in the midst of catastrophe. Uh, issuing pronouncements that, to paraphrase Shakespeare, are tales told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. The idiocy has continued unabated in the form of daily sweet, uh, tweet storms, excuse me, absurd public statements. Children can't get the virus, he says. It will disappear shortly after we open the schools. Hydrochloroquine, hydro hydroxychloroquine really works regardless of scientific opinion. Uh, masks are effective. Uh, wait, Tuesday, uh, maybe they're not. Wednesday, maybe they are, and on and on. A miracle vaccine is just around the corner, he says, or look for it by election day. Mm -hmm. The semi-coherent ramblings may very well be calculated for political effect. The Donald enjoys the trappings of the presidency and would obviously like to stay in office for another four years. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, provided he doesn't have to actually perform on the job. This re this precludes dealing seriously with the pandemic, though, which is what it is, he says, a problem that doesn't respond to Trump's posturing and rhetoric, unlike his base, and is therefore not worth his uh, time or attention. Better to let it take care of itself while he focuses on the endless election campaign. So it's easy to make Trump our virus scapegoat, and he does bear much of the responsibility. And yet there's something about the contemporary nature of America, of America, uh, that we need to look into it. Americans need to admit this. At this point in our history, it's questionable uh, whether the U.S. is really capable anymore of addressing something like the COVID-19. Great leadership might make the difference, but there don't appear to be any Lincolns or FDRs on the horizon. And would Americans follow them if they there were? American individual doing one's own thing is a famously prominent aspect of our national character and uh, itself milita uh, militates against cooperative or collaborative efforts, such as a coordinated national response to the coronavirus to agreed upon rules and regulations. Rampant individualism would be a difficult enough obstacle to overcome in this instance, but lately it's been twisted into a in, uh, reprehensible character of itself. Individualism now simply expresses itself as being selfish. Selfish is okay. Early 21st century America has devolved into a nation that comprises or combines maximum freedom with uh, minimal responsibility. Witness the hordes of people gathering to Together, in defiance of medical experts to hold urban block parties, attend motorcycle rallies, or congregate on crowded beaches, intermingling without protective masks or social distancing. Americans feel they have a God-given right to fund that can't be abridged, even at the expense of public health. Outside the Northwest, which Trump uh, would disparagingly call European in its sensibility, mm -hmm. uh, 
I condemn for the lockdown and covering up has become the quintessential American attitude for at least a large minority of our fellow Americans. That includes you, right? No, I hope not. Uh, exaggerated notions of freedom uh, go hand in hand with our two other cultural characteristics and spreading uh, impatience and desire for instant gratification. Uh, these traits, which have recently taken on a conspicuous prominence among Americans traveling abroad, have led to the reemergence of a distinct cultural type we thought was consigned to the past, the ugly American. Yes, that's how we saw ourselves in the 50s and 60s, as the ugly American, because that's the way the rest of the world saw us. In Ireland, one of the few European destinations still available to blacklisted U.S. nationals because of our COVID-19 infection rate, you know, locals have been horrified by impatient Yankee tourists who arrogantly flout the country's visitor quarantine rules, quickly wearing out their welcome. Americans will apparently brook no pandemic restrictions on their behavior, no matter where they go. At home, resistance to sensible health regulations has drifted toward outright violence or threats of violence. Here. You know, no other country battling the coronavirus has come anywhere close to producing such a reaction, reaction not even Brazil. Uh, much of this is a result of political hatreds in a polarized nation. Americans are so divided between blue and red that they will fight over minimal public health recommendations. This is mask wearing and our crowd avoidance. Mm -hmm. Elsewhere in the world, politics is reserved for serious public uh, policy differences. Other democracies agree on the basics. We don't. We don't agree. Don't agree on the basics. Mm -hmm. Not America. Distrust of government and public authorities, a product of four decades of relentless conservative propaganda from outlets like Fox News. I would say going back many more decades than that. The same mindset that produced the Tea Party and the right-wing militias contribute to American impotence in the face of a pandemic. Uh, conservative extremists would rather oppose per perceived liberal values than take on what literally threatens to kill them. One example, the ide ideological refusal to wear face coverage um, as a safety measure was on view around the country, especially in July and August, as corporations like Walmart and Walgreens finally uh, made a prohibition to people coming in without masks. The companies in question were the same ones that, who had demanded America open for business, regardless of medical concerns, which points up another reason why the U.S. can't beat the virus. President Calvin Coolidge uh, proclaimed it succinctly in the 1920s. He said, the business of America is business. Uh, making money, in other words, so precedes everything else, including good health. Mm, sounds deadly. Finally, there's one last reason why the virus is winning in the U.S., and it's perhaps the most obviously, namely our lack of coherent strategy to combat the virus. This country does not have a pandemic policy. Under Trump, it has 50 policies. The shifting of re uh, responsibility to individual governors by def default has guaranteed chaos and ineffectuality. Some states are managing adequately, but many are not. Above all, states don't control their borders. They're not like countries. So the virus can go where it wants. Prioritizing federalism in a time of pandemic has proven suicidal. Uh, so again, we'll end with Pogo's famous statement. We have met the enemy and the enemy is us. All right. I lay down for this because I want you to remind you what happens when you get COVID. You will lay down for a long time and hopefully you won't lay down till you're dead. Uh, I just wanted to share this article because... Uh, I don't want to be sick, and I would like my neighbors to wear a mask if they're not. Uh, and I'm yes, I'm in a red state. <laughs> uh, and I would like you to wear a mask when you're out and about. I would like you to social distance. I would like you to take this all seriously. Stay home. Stop the pandemic. Do what you can. Um, if you can work from home, do it. If you can't, please, please be careful. Uh, this is Kevin Stoda. I'm not on the porch right now. I'm on my bed trying to relax and, and uh, 
you get unstressed after another day in uh, America's coronavirus world. We've had 200,000 deaths already. We don't need any more. And there's a lot of people who've had coronavirus, probably will hit 8, 8 million at the end of uh, next month. And we'll probably have another uh, 20,000 deaths before the election. In the meantime, this is Kevin Storta saying, take care. We love you. Uh, subscribe to the Kevin Storta channel here and uh, try your best to be safe. Uh, and like me too. Give me a thumbs up, big thumbs up. Thank you. Have a good day.